Hey, good day to you. This is Todd. I'm just a regular dude walking the word. Um, I'm sitting out here. I'm drinking my Liberty Brew Mountain Dew because um, we're talking about being free today. And the Liberty Brew. Um, well, anyway, the name says to be free. Um, we're talking today. We're, we're, remember, we're in Chapter 2 of the Book of Ruth. And there's three themes we've talked about in, in uh, Chapter 2. Of Ruth. The first one is let your conversation involve the Lord. The second one, which we talked about yesterday, is gleaning and dealing with the poor. And the third one is this, uh, dealing with the kinsman redeemer, or you're going to learn the term today in Hebrew, goel. Okay. And that is um, what we're talking about today, the, the kinsman redeemer. And this, let me tell you something. This is a foreign concept today because we don't have anything... Um, or like it in our laws or anything. So uh, when you're reading through the book of Ruth, you're like, what in the world are they talking about? What, what is all this stuff? But this goes all the way back to Leviticus 25. So I would encourage you today, I don't have time to read it here to you, but go back to Leviticus 25. It spells it all out. And Boaz knew this. Well, everyone knew it back then, but they knew it and, and they were following the law of Leviticus 25. So a lot of the stuff we talk about it here. It goes back, you know, Ruth is going back to Leviticus, to the Levitical law, but then the stuff is pointing to Jesus. So the, the Bible's all tied together here, okay? But we're going to read verses 17 uh, through the end of the chapter, and that's verse, uh, verse 23, all right? So it says this, So Ruth gleaned in the field until evening. Then she threshed her barley. She had gathered, and it amounted to about an epaph. She carried it back to town, and her mother-in-law saw how much she had gathered. Ruth also brought out and gave her what she had left over after she had eaten enough. Her mother-in-law asked her, Where did you glean today? Where did you work? Blessed be the man who took notice of you. Then Ruth told her mother-in-law about the one who was at place she had been working. The name of the man I worked with today is Boaz, she said. The Lord bless him. Uh, see that? We're continuing our conversation, you know, about the Lord uh, with everything that's, up, with, that's being said. So, the Lord bless him, Naomi said to her daughter-in-law. He has not stopped showing his kindness to the living and the dead. She added, that man is a close relative. He is one of our guardian redeemers. Eh, Right here, guardian redeemers, that's the NIV of saying it. The Hebrew term is goel, and also in the King James, it'd be kinsman redeemer. Then Ruth the Moabitess said, He even said to me, Stay with my workers until they finish harvesting all my grain. Naomi said to Ruth, her daughter-in-law, It will be good for you, my daughter, to go with a woman who works for him, because in someone else's field you might be harmed. So Ruth stayed close to the woman of Boaz to glean until the barley and wheat harvest were finished. And she lived with her mother-in-law. So this whole thing, it's, it's introducing the term of goel, um, or, or I'm not, I'm not going to use the word goel anymore, but kinsman redeemer. Um, it, it, it's, it's the law of Leviticus. And what it was what it happened is, let's say that, that you were poor, which, which happened to them. They moved out of the country. And so they probably sold their, their fields and stuff before they moved out of the country. They come back and they're poor, okay? Now, um, you could redeem that property, okay? It wasn't, it, it was always, it, you know, according to, to God's law, it was always supposed to stay in the family. But if you had to sell it because you were poor, you could sell it, but then you could come back and redeem it. Okay, especially in the, the 50th year or 49th year, you could come back and redeem it and, and you were legally obligated uh, to redeem it. Now, the thing is to, here is this, too. Um, you might have died uh, in, in that time, so it would be up to your children to redeem that property. So it would stay in the family. But um, and so that's the whole point. And so God lays that out so that the land doesn't ever leave, leave the family. Um, but if you have to sell it for a time period, then then you can. Um, so that's what is happening here. It's being redeemed. But the same thing happens um, with the, the wife, okay? So, <clears throat> and we don't have this happen today. But 
if the oldest brother oldest brother he has a wife and he doesn't have any children and um, he dies the next brother is obligated to to marry her okay and then and to carry on the family name okay and so that that's happened uh, throughout the Bible here um, so that's the kinsman redeemer Boaz is really the only one in the in the Old Testament here that is a good example of that the um, the kinsman redeemer so um, anyway but the whole thing remember how I said the whole thing uh, points to Jesus Jesus is our kinsman redeemer I deserve to be in hell but he redeemed me okay he, he paid the price and so I can go to heaven my sins are forgiven okay so that whole this whole picture here in chapter 2 of Ruth is played out later on in Jesus's life and in, in our salvation where um, he has has paid for our sins really uh, and redeemed and redeemed us I deserve hell but he's um, redeemed me from hell and so I don't have to spend eternity in hell I can spend it with him in heaven because he has paid that price so that's the thing that's uh, it's it just blows your mind when when you're reading through this and you're in chapter two and like wow this it points back to Leviticus okay because they're following that but then it also it points forward to Jesus in this whole thing and we're gonna get we haven't even got into talking about uh, the ancestral line how Ruth is gonna play a part in that and she's you know a foreigner a Moabitess so anyway so my encouragement uh, for you today is you know get into the word and, and look at it here and as you're studying look at how it points to the to the law but then it, it also points to Jesus everything here in the Old Testament uh, in a way points to Jesus so anyway, that's the, the Kinsman Redeemer. Thanks for watching. I'm just a regular dude walking the word. I'll see you tomorrow as we continue. We're going to move into chapter three of Ruth tomorrow. We'll see you then. Blessings. Mm -hmm.